right, hey everybody, welcome back to Cocktail Culture with Citywide Liquors. I'm Daniel, and today I'm joined with Andy Kepshire from Revolution Brewing. Andy, how's it going, man? Going good, Daniel. How are you? I am doing really well today. Um, we, yeah, like I said, it's our second interview, so we're just getting this rolling. Um, so I'll just start with the questions, man. So how long have you been in the beer industry? I've been in the beer industry, uh, uh, I want to say a little over eight years now. It's a little blurred, uh, like when it officially began, but you know, started off uh, working at a liquor store and then got to the distributor side for about four and a half years. And now I've been with Rev for three and a half coming up on four years in April. That's awesome. And there's definitely been a lot of changes at Revolution, at least in the last, you know, since you've been there, just explosion of growth, it seems like. Just, uh, would you would you think the same? Especially in Northern Indiana. Like right. our, our <laughs> growth in Northern Indiana has been absolutely nuts, even with the pandemic going on. Uh, I actually just got off a meeting with our distributor and, you know, our off-premise business is up like 26%. Wow. Overall, we're still growing at almost a 10% clip, even with us losing the bars for a while. So it, we've been really fortunate to uh, keep growing and have such acceptance here in Indiana. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I know Revolution's a big brewery and uh, like even just, I guess, last February 2019, me and a couple other guys from our store were able to come up and you gave us a nice tour of the, the brewery up there. And it's just quite the setup for sure thank you yeah we uh th those 800 barrel fermenters are so big <laughs> yes. and th they're imposing when you get to look at them man. I, I was really happy to have you guys come up man that was a great time oh definitely yeah for sure man we appreciate it um so so what uh brought you i mean so you worked at a liquor store work a distributor what made you want to go work at a liquor store was it just a job to start with or was it you had some interest in the industry uh, both. It, it was, uh, I'd gotten some interest in the industry, um, pretty much like right as I was getting out of college. So freshly 21, 22. For sure. Wasn't really a big domestic drinker yeah. and just started trying different stuff. Um, so I, I got hooked on craft beer, like right at the age of 22. I remember like I was at Kuma's Corner in Chicago, mm -hmm. said, screw it. Just tried one off the menu. It was, uh, Tiranina, Rocky's Revenge, their barrel oh, yeah. brown. For sure. And I, Loved that beer and then just like started finding everything else I could enjoy. Um, it was around that time when I got, you know, bouncing from job to job because, you know, whatever you get your college degree in usually doesn't matter for where you end up. Right. right. Uh, um, so started looking to get on the beer side of things and had my resume in to some distributors, uh, some suppliers, and picked up a part time job at a liquor store while I was waiting. Right. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's how a lot of people start either doing liquor store or distribution. I started the same way. I started at a beer and wine shop and moved on to distribution and now back at a beer and wine shop and liquor. So <laughs> it's coming full <laughs> circle over here. <laughs> oh, absolutely. So I know we, you hear it, maybe not as, maybe we've both heard it a lot by working in liquor stores, working in distribution. There's always an old man saying, what's this new thing, craft beer? And I think we know that craft beer is a, is a trend from the, started in the seventies and is, is here to stay for sure. But yeah. uh, what do you think, what current trends within craft beer do you think are, are here and are going to keep going? And maybe even which ones do you think are, are a flash in the pan? Um, but, and I know like, you know, the seltzer trend's a monster right now. I think seeing right. these craft breweries jump into the seltzer game is here to stay. I think a yeah. lot of them are going that way. Um, I also think the non-alcoholic trend, kind of part of that better for you, mm -hmm. is really growing. I believe Deschutes is really putting some time and effort into research for it currently. Right. And they're such a big craft brand. Like those guys, they're not going to do something half-assed or poorly. So right. they're really looking at getting into that segment. Um, I, I think those are two areas that are growing. I, there's no point in talking about hazy because that's been such a huge thing for like five years now. <laughs> right, right. Um, but I, I also think there's a return to session beers that yeah. we're starting to see. Yeah. You know, people are sitting at home and drinking significantly more. The four, four and a half, five percenter, it's a lot easier on you um, mm -hmm. yeah. throughout the day. And I think people are appreciating the volume drinking as opposed to like, I'm going to have one or two and then. Right hopefully don't pass out on the back of the floor. Yeah. And say a lot of 
breweries, I guess, making their, and some of the more high alcohol stuff is becoming more drinkable, I guess, in like not a great way where you're like, I can't even taste the 10% in this or whatever, where, I mean, yeah. you know, Revolution definitely has nothing to do with that making, you know, incredible, you know, D star cafe D making 15% really drinkable yeah. stouts and straight jacket and things like that, that are just like, I can't believe this, this tastes this way. And is that percentage? Uh, but no, I think, I mean, NA like Lagunitas this week, at least hitting our market this week, Lagunitas has an IPNA coming out, uh, dropping. I know oh, in our awesome. stores, this is going to be dated, but you know, it'd be a week or two ago, whenever, but yeah, say so we have it now. And I I'm interested in trying it for sure. Just, you know, like you said, big breweries doing it, they're not going to do it the wrong way. No, I, absolutely. So you're seeing kind of the same stuff. I am there. Right. Yeah. So Revolution, have any, have you heard anything about maybe uh, an NA or a seltzer? I, <laughs> uh, seltzers are a no go. Uh, <laughs> um, we haven't uh, really done any serious talks about an NA. It's been a conversation like in jest, like, oh, we'll, we'll make anti-zero and that'll yeah. be our non-alcoholic at the pub. Um, I mean, branding alone been can sell a, things sometimes, so. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but that's been more of a joke than seriousness. Right, I'm, I'm right. sure it's something we'd look at more down the road. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not quite the uh, scale of a Deschutes yet, but mm-hmm. we're still uh, pretty sizable and exploring some other avenues right now. Right. So we're, we're looking to get heavier into that session area. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of hype breweries right now, you know, ones that people, you know, whether it's, it's great for the industry, it's great for people drinking them, but what do you think, what breweries right now do you think are underrated that people should be drinking more of? There's two that come to mind. I, I looked at it from like two different angles. Mm-hmm. One was who in Indiana is yeah. really underrated and also like in our home market of Chicago. So in Indiana, I think New Overfalls is okay. drastically underrated <laughs> for the quality of liquid they produce. Like it's super consistent. <laughs> I've not had a bad beer from them. Yeah, I, I would love to see them talked about more on the scale of um, our larger local brewers. I, I I'm yeah, blown that's, away that's by hilarious because <laughs> I've done two of these interviews now. You're the second, and they are two for two for that question. Like I, yeah. I just <laughs> I, I talked uh, talked to Zach from Craft Roads the other day and the same right he, he he they were the first one he said as well and i 100 percent agree and i think they make great stuff maybe if they move into cans sometime soon um i think the maybe people are just like oh it's bottled we're like you get those old again those old drinkers who are like i'm not going to drink anything in a can but all the new current drinkers ipa drinkers are all moving to cans because they know it's a better vessel so maybe yeah, absolutely. Who knows? i know canning lines aren't inexpensive but <laughs> the can trends are insane right i, I want to say cans are up like 50, I was just looking at the data, cans are up like 54, 55% in Indiana mm-hmm. craft this yeah. year. Stupid. But I think that would be a huge thing. I mean, their artwork's fun. Their beer's great. Yeah. So yeah, I'd love to see them uh, get to that next level for sure. Um, right. And then I think kind of in that same boat in Chicago is uh, Spiteful. Oh yeah, for sure. I love their porter. Oh yeah, that uh, goddamn pigeon porter. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've again, I've not had a bad beer from them really. Mm -hmm. And just, they fly under the radar because you've got like all the bigger names and the hype breweries and that, but they're super consistent. They're on the shelf and they're making great juice. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It's readily available all the time. Good stuff, consistent product. And I feel like you're always surprised with how good it is. Like, not like you would think it's bad, but you're just like, oh man, I haven't had this for a little while. I totally forgot. This is awesome. Yeah. They're both like breweries that they're not necessarily the first on your mind when you go out, but when you crack it, you're like, wow, this is in the conversation with like the top five that I would bring up at any point. Mm-hmm. There's you forget to mention them or they, they, they just kind of like fall by the wayside sometimes, which is unfortunate. Right. Right. Now, definitely. It's sad for some breweries who make an, making an awesome product, but for some reason don't always get the shine they deserve. Did so has, I know Revolution's big, obviously huge on cans. Did was there ever bottling? I feel like it, are there bombers in the past, or are there ever twelve ounce bottles? Uh, there were bombers in the past. You are correct. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know if you remember when, when we first launched Indiana, February twenty seventeen. Mm-hmm. Um, we had some uh, barrel aged bombers come in. I believe straight jacket, right? Easter, um, maybe some cafe. Uh, so that was actually the last run of those packages from okay. 2016 and 2017 because 
toward the end of that year, we brought in a whole new canning line and launched our Deep Woods beers in four pack cans. Yeah. For the first yeah. time. We I think also, everybody's kind of following all the you hero on that. stuff. Oh yeah. It's been, we were smart, but wasn't my decision by any means. But like, <laughs> you that made that personal decision, decision to our, do that. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'll take 100% of the credit. Right. Um, yeah. No, that was, that was a great move by our, our folks up top to say, we're going this way. We think this is the way the industry is going. And it, it won. And we also were able to like trim that, uh, like cost per ounce to the consumer, putting it in the four pack as opposed to a single unit, which was really exciting. Um, and before that, we had like all the hero beers, like the IPAs were coming out in bombers, our saisons, cross of gold. We, we had a lot of that running. I want to say to like 2014. I, I could be wrong in the year, but for a solid amount of time. Right, right. No, it makes it seems like yeah, Revolution is definitely on the early cusp of of doing cans, doing craft beer in cans for sure. I remember working at you yeah. know distributors, and I remember working at yeah liquor store in 2012. And people, you couldn't sell Dale's Pale to people because they thought it was no. cheap junk because they were like, it's in a can. Why would I want it? And to like my big craft beer drinkers who, you know, regulars and stuff. And I'm just like, it's a great pale. Like, why don't you, you know, and they were, people God. were kind of, you know, against it at the time for sure. Yeah. It's kind of mind blowing. I think that they were against it. And you're trying to like sell it to yeah. them. Like, hey, this is lined with a uh, food grade plastic. You're right. not getting the metal taste. And yeah. And it's going on deaf ears and now like yeah. it is what's moving. Right. Right. So I mean, it's, it's kind of crazy. Oh, definitely. I, st I still hear sometimes I've seen people say, Oh, it's just, it's just cooler to drink out of a bottle. I'm like, I literally don't care what it looks like or feel like one pour it into a glass and two, yeah. like, I just want it, the good product. Like maybe, maybe my priorities are wrong. Maybe I need to reexamine my life, but it's, <laughs> I don't understand sometimes. I mean, if you're looking at quality, there's something wrong there. But. Right, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> so it is uh, this time of year. It's, uh, you know, getting colder. People are drinking those higher ABV things. And it's also the time the Deep Woods comes out every year. Um, so, yes. so far, we've seen uh, Deep Star. We've seen Cafe Deep. Um, I know some others are coming. What else is on the schedule? Uh, if you're allowed to say. I know we've say. got straight... Oh yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got Straight Jacket and Death by Cherries coming. Oh, cool, awesome. Do we so, have a so, general uh, time frame? I know they kind of like pop out every couple months. It seems like. Yeah, so we we try to do like one big release a month, um, okay. starting in October. Okay. And I want to say they're coming to the distributor by end of this week. Oh wow! Okay, awesome. Yeah, yeah. We, we so we, we what we've been doing is the release of the brewery and then allowing it to start hitting truck star distributors. Gotcha. So we get our release out of the way and then start shipping them out. Awesome. That's um, incredible. In terms of what's coming after that, we're going to have a, uh, I know Rye Way to Heaven's going to make it out this way, I believe. But awesome. we're doing some other smaller batch stuff that might be brewery only. Like we're going to have Mineshaft Gap coming, which awesome Dr. Strange Love reference in the name. Right. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> um, but, but that's going to be um, another like, barley wine type ale in uh hmm. I can't remember if it's cognac or armagnac barrels but, but that, I, mean, I don't it, think the american it taste might be tell a difference probably not um, <laughs> <laughs> or french taste for that um matter. fair enough <laughs> I, I, at that point with all the beer in there and uh second use basically oh, yeah. um but yeah I, I know that's coming in short order i'm not sure if that where that's going to fall distribution wise specifically mm -hmm. um i know illinois to a limited degree for sure um, and definitely the brewery, we, we may see some of that trickle over. I'll have to double check on that. Awesome. Yeah, that sounds, people are always asking, they're like, I know this is coming out, or I know, like, why isn't this out yet? And I'm like, they, they don't all come out at one time, the deep woods. Like, they forget it's like a trickle of, yeah, like you said, one or two a month or whatever. People are like, I still like to think they all come out at once. I, and let's be honest, like the, the Bourbon County releases probably are what have like primed them to expect things that way. Probably. Yeah, definitely. seems like everybody that like Thanksgiving week, you get a ton, you get a bunch of people start hitting all their bourbon barrel stuff and it's a good time. Good time for beer for sure. Oh yeah. I, I love that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, speaking of like, uh, so 
I know it's tough to uh, determine what your favorite beer is, but I, I find myself, I drink whatever I want, whenever I want, you know, like gear, I'm not a big seasonal drinker, but it is, you know, it gets cold or you start to feel stouts. Uh, but what's your favorite beer yeah. right now? What, what have you been drinking the most of lately that you're excited to pull off the shelves? Lately? Um, I want to take this as like a two part or two, like Please. in terms of revol- in terms of revolution, like, I tend to normally drink quite a bit of Eugene. I think mm-hmm. it's such an awesome beer from for us. Sure. Um, probably doesn't get the love it deserves. Um, so I have been drinking a ton of that. Uh, outside of our product, there isn't really like one specific thing I've gravitated towards. Mm-hmm. I've been grabbing a lot of like the local seasonals and local stouts just because, again, it's that time of year. Right. Um, so that, that's where I've been falling. Like I'm always going to grab an Alpha Claws when it comes out because I really right. enjoy that beer. For sure. Um, so that, that's, that's kind of where I've been. I, man, uh, that's always a hard question for me, even when I think on it, because it's a constantly rotating wheel. Mm-hmm. Uh, right. We're going like, <laughs> right. Big, that's why big, I right. even <laughs> try to narrow it down a little bit by uh, saying like beer right now, as opposed to your favorite beer overall, because it's difficult anyway. But yeah. so <laughs> I, I will go with pretty much any of the, like the, the seasonal stouts right. and porters that mm-hmm. are coming out. Right Winter now. warmers, things like that. Spice dales, those kinds of things. Absolutely. I don't like it crazy spicy, but like Alpha Claws is like right at that level where I'm really happy with it. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, any other like seasonal porters and stouts. I'm a big porter stout drinker to begin with. Mm-hmm. I'm also going to throw in there like this is my favorite any time of year. Any of the Dre Fontaine Sours, yes. Lambics, Gooses I can get my hands on are always like top three in that list. So, oh yeah, definitely. No, I love, love when we have those available and that's pretty regularly for us. They don't. I, I love having people from California and like New York come into Indiana and our area and say like, I cannot believe this is on the shelf. How is this not sold? Because those areas, they just like pop off. And then in Indiana, it's like, yeah, we have them. Like come get them when you want them. It's, it's, it's very exciting. Yeah. It's a blessing and a curse. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> try not to buy as many $30 beers as I can. I try to I try to avoid that. Treat them for uh, special times. Definitely. <laughs> I, you, yeah, I, I struggle with that where I walk in like, ooh, it's not going to hurt if I grab one or two more of these. Like, nope, you got to stop. Like, <laughs> got, you know, a car note to pay. And <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, um, what, in the last year, last two years, I know you've been hitting the gym a lot more, been working out, and I know you were really big on hard seltzer, speaking of, and if uh, Revolution isn't making them, uh, what is, what's your favorite hard seltzer? Um, even that, like, I don't necessarily have a favorite. <laughs> I, I I'll bounce like it's more flavor preferences as opposed to right. brand preferences. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I, honestly, I drink a lot of a, a like White Claw Mango for sure or the lime. So those are probably top two just in terms of availability. Um, I, I've enjoyed. Oh God, I can't remember what's the one out of Wisconsin. I'm spacing oh, on it right now. Art. Them and there was another one uh, came out. I want to say either early this year or late last year. Mm. Uh, I, I'm, I'm spacing on it, but I, they, they were awesome. I, I'm also one of those weird folks who's a big fan of the Corona Refrescas. Right. I, I have not tried those, but we, they, Corona started doing those seltzers and the Refrescas kind of like fell out of yeah. the market a little bit, but they're coming back and people have been like asking for them for sure. Yeah. I, I know they're not as healthy as the seltzers, but oh, yeah. damn, do they taste good? <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Maybe that's the, uh, that's the thing. I'm, when you're low fat ice cream versus your, your full fat and you're like, why does it taste better? Oh wait, it's worse for me. That's why it tastes better. Exactly. <laughs> and it's... one gram of sugar. We're, we're stuck in our houses. So who cares? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yep. Yep. Don't, uh, don't even look at the scale all through the holidays. That's, I'm just like, I don't care. I'll, no. <laughs> I'll worry about that in March. <laughs> Gotta stay warm exactly. for sure. <laughs> Do you mind if I uh, share a couple of pictures? On here oh yeah go ahead man yeah definitely awesome uh, i really wanted to talk about like our the new packaging that we're doing I figured it'd be easier to throw it on a powerpoint like oh yeah we've got awesome. like you've probably seen it in the market already the new anti-hero cans i love our new artwork and i'm really excited and just wanted to like let people know like keep an eye out for the new artwork like that, that the can yeah. visuals are changing a little bit um so we got anti-hero that's in market now you saw the mm-hmm. new league of heroes already Yes. Yeah, definitely. If we've been rocking those for sure. We're going to continue. We're going to continue this sort of theme of like, we're going to do different artwork on each package. Oh, cool. It's a little thematic. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, so I'm really excited for those to keep coming. They should pop off the shelves a little more than just the black suitcase look. Um, Everyday Hero and Hazy Hero are coming as well. Oh, Hazy cool. Hero is awesome. like right in the pipeline very soon. Um, and Everyday Hero, I'm really excited for the new 15 pack we'll have on that. Yeah. Got the new Christmas cans, as you see in the market, and Coffee Eugene coming behind it as a seasonal. I'm so excited to see it as a seasonal. I love yes. that beer. It's my despite all the barrel age stuff it's my favorite release we do every year yeah so see, i be, i love uh, that porter and, and i love a coffee porter for sure i think it's i don't know sometimes it hits better than a coffee stout it's it's like the closest thing we can get to coffee bender in indiana that's for sure <laughs> oh my god i love coffee bender. <laughs> man <laughs> so, uh, a darkness day release was like one of my first big beer events i went to and oh yeah it shaped me yeah <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm excited for this. We're also partnering with three different coffee roasters. So oh, awesome. there will be, so yeah, w- there's going to be a way for us to identify like which six pack is which roaster. Cause it's going to come in different waves. Oh, cool. Yeah. Definitely let us know so we can pass that on to customers. Cause I know people love to know that and love to like try different versions for sure. Absolutely. I, I will make sure to get that info to you. And then, uh, the new 15 pack and everyday hero taking kind of that, uh, Marvel-ish approach, and mm-hmm. instead of Avengers Tower, we've got like a hero tower that we <laughs> dropped in the middle of a Chicago oh, yeah. uh, escape. The next thing, is it's really exciting for us. We do have a new product coming early next year. Um, speaking on the session stuff and seltzer type stuff, we're going to awesome. have a variety pack of Freedom Sours. Oh, awesome. That's, that's incredible. That'll be a great seller for sure to me personally. <laughs> yeah, I, th- that's the first thing I said when we came out. It's like, this is the one product that I we'll bring home from the brewery every time to drink. Right. <laughs> yeah. Heck um, yeah, definitely. We, those, those sours just crush it. Have you, how often does that expression come out? I feel like I see, is that one, that one's more of a smaller seasonal, I feel like, right. Or is that just ma- in the main rotation? Maybe it just sold so fast with the strawberry rhubarb. So like with that one, it's uh, just going to be kind of a rotational release that okay. we've, we've done. So we came out with it uh, last year. And then again, this year, and now it's going to make its way into the 12 pack. So it might be a while before we see it in 16 ounce cans again. Okay. Um, because we're going to start releasing like other limited sours where we're testing flavors and stuff. Sweet. In that mix. Yeah. That's awesome. So I, I think that'll be fun. We're going to see, I know we've got like something with raspberry coming, uh, a watermelon mint was talked about and there was another flavor I can't think of uh, right now. Cause it's, it's all like, R&D stuff that we're just gonna like, hey, let's let's see what works and see what the public thinks about that. Right. I mean, and that's something exciting for for definitely you working on the brewery side of being able to hopefully, you know, get some of those test batches, test flavors and see what you think is especially they kind of have to without the tap rooms. Are the tap rooms open right now at all? No, um, we're we're doing some carry out business, but Chicago, um, basically, if you've got a patio, you can keep rolling. Some folks are choosing to. Yeah. but it's been pretty tight right now. Like we've got our brew pub shut down until mm-hmm. tentatively March. Yeah. But we're still doing a carry out at the tap room. And that's how we're handling all of our barrel age releases too. Oh, okay. Like pre-order. We do like a pre-order set up online and you check in when you're coming to get them and we uh, get them to your car. Gotcha. Awesome. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, you definitely, without having the, the tap room R&D there to see what sells and what people are liking and what's rolling through, you know, hey, we sold... 10 six barrels of that this week like maybe we should can it or something as if so now they have yeah. to lean on you guys a little more oh, when you're I, like absolutely. i just want to drink fist city like <laughs> yep like, just give me more and... <laughs> <laughs> oh man that would be killer uh but yeah it's it's also fun though to like see that process like when we did we came out with the freedom of assembly with the blueberry one mm-hmm. You know, at the at the brewery, we had four of them on tap in the back for us to check out, leave notes and all that. And we use that as part of our tour, too, to get feedback from people coming through. So I, I think that's going to be really fun down the road when we get back open. Awesome. Yeah, that's so exciting. It's exciting to see those new packages, uh, ready to see them on the shelves for sure. Even though it's weird with packaging because as much as, you know, you want people to have a familiar thing to go to, um, even, and even though Revolution has great packaging already to start with, but it's nice to see some brands starting to do some refreshes and it just like keeps people's eyes on them on the shelves for sure. No, oh, absolutely. I thought what New Belgium did over the last couple of years has yeah, been incredible. Definitely. Uh, we're looking to get into cartons down the road. Cool. So I think that'll be really fun. And 
uh, the big thing for us wanting to get in that new package too is like we had come out with so many new beers mm -hmm. we really want to adjust our stuff to all look like revolution beers next to each other and mm -hmm. not as much of a kind of a mixed bag on how they looked right definitely yeah that's um I mean, with the Hazy Hero, I feel like that one's just like slightly different, not having the fist on the can, right? It's yeah. just like a slight, slight difference. But I mean, people, it's still Rev branded for sure. Now you talk about yeah. the, to keep going too long on this, but uh, the cardboard package, do we know, does that have like an environmental difference than like the uh, six pack holders or like, uh, um, is there advantages to that? I think the major advantage to that is, uh, you know, we're going to be using a lot of recycled material either mm -hmm. which way. Uh, pack decks are heavily recycled material. Right. Um, but the real advantage is in the image and the merchandising. Gotcha. It doesn't do a customer, a brewery, a distributor, or a store any credit when, you know, cans get twisted the wrong way. Right. We're looking at them. It <laughs> yeah. Doesn't, yeah, yeah. At least with like, like a cardboard wrap, like you can kind of control what the visual is That's from true. inside. Yeah. So the shelf presentation is really where we're looking to go with that. Oh, okay, sure yeah, there. that makes that makes a lot of sense for sure. Like I coming from stores before, coming from merchandising, like it's kind of an automatic for me for sure that I, I have a lot of, I feel like I have salesmen and reps coming in and be like, this cooler, like it looks really like everything's turned. I'm like, it's just like the way my brain is broken. That's how, that's how this works. You you can't break those habits. It's, it's, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I understand completely, man. I think I think I contacted you early when when we were opening, and I'm just like, what's like the proper branding that Revolution? I was like, do you want two fists facing out, or do you want yeah. two of the labels facing out? Because I'm like, what do you guys actually want? Because I don't want to be wasting my time more than I already <laughs> am turning these cans. So. Yeah, I, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, it's I'm very broken, and I guess it's in the proper way. It's the way, yeah, uh, it, it's know. a good habit in a position like that. Right, right, right. L yeah. Luckily, somehow, yeah, it worked out for me that my my problematic OCD is coming into play to making things look nice. Yeah. Broken in the way <laughs> that an elevator still works after it's broken. I'm okay with that. Or es escalator, that's what I meant to say. <laughs> yeah. Escalator broken. Stairs. <laughs> right, right, for sure. <laughs> Oh, all right. Well, I appreciate that like presentation you put out, man. Uh, I think people really love seeing the new package and it's just going to show like just the advancement moving forward. And especially with uh, a lot more uh, purchasing that's happening in stores, whereas people can't be going to the bars as much. Um, people are driven to the shelves, especially. Um, so awesome. Uh, anything else you got to plug, man? Um, that's all, man. I just want to okay. say thank you very much for all the support. Like Citywide takes great care of Revolution. They're awesome places to shop. Like that, it's one of my favorite stops when I come into town. So <laughs> we appreciate. Always it, love man. seeing you guys. Yeah, we love it. Yeah, well, thanks so much for doing this. And um, all right, man. Well, we'll see you soon. I appreciate it. And everyone out there watching, thank you so much for watching this week. Definitely subscribe to our channel, like the video. Also, you can subscribe to this audio podcast uh, if you're watching video, or vice versa. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Amazon Podcasts. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Thank you.